All right, here we are. Welcome to day number 13 of the Mouth Breathing Awareness Campaign. Today's May 13th, so we have been doing this 13 days in a row. I've had 13 different interviews with all of my amazing Mile Mentor graduates. And today I have Dave Hendrickson here. He is a dental hygienist and a Mile Functional Therapist based out of the Seattle area. So Bothell, right? Bothell's where you live? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, he's doing myofunctional therapy out of his dental practice. At least that's the way it started. And then I think things have morphed and now you've kind of got your own practice or something in between. Um, I'd love to hear your story, Dave. So um, yeah, yeah, go for it. Start, start with however you want to start. And I know you'll probably talk about your kids, but um, you know, I'll, I'll let you take it away. You're, you're a good talker. (laughs) That's great. So um, my journey started about five years ago. Um, I started in our dental practice um, seeing patients um, kind of with an airway focus. Uh, The dentist I worked for um, began to make mandibular advancement devices kind of to treat sleep apnea. And um, it kind of sent me down on this journey of how do people really get to a point where they need treatment for sleep apnea? Um, and it, it took me down this really w- long, windy road where I really started to come to an understanding of uh, the importance of tongue placement and the importance of nose breathing um, in my patients. And as I did that, I, um, about the same time, my daughter was born. Um, so here I was, I was a practicing hygienist um, and a new dad. And um, uh, I had a, an, o- an older child as well. But um, so I'm sitting in the dental office and my doctor subscribes to these, um, I, what do you call them? Like videos about um, sleep apnea. And I'm sitting in the practice between patients watching these videos, like falling asleep in my chair, watching yeah. these videos about sleep apnea. Were and those I, videos really quick, Dave, was that like spear education or what would it have been? It was, know? um, gosh, um, it was like, it was an, it was a, I think it was a 10 hour course. It was a series of videos to teach dentists about how to get into sleep airway. Um, Interesting. Uh, Obstructive sleep airway university, I think is what it was called. Oh, okay. Um, and it was, it was listening. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there listening, I'm falling asleep and realize, and I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I must have sleep apnea because I am so tired. And, um, and I don't, I didn't have sleep apnea. I just had, um, interrupted sleep every night from, um, a newborn at home and kind of through that process, I really came to kind of that firsthand experience of like, this is what it feels like to not be able to sleep well. And, um, and that kind of led me down this garden path of like, how do I help other people not to experience some of these things? And I really began to realize so many of these people that I was seeing in my dental chair have this um, disordered sleep and sleep disordered breathing and what could I do about it? And so we started making these mandibular advancement devices. They helped out people, um, but a lot of them didn't really work that well. Um, and a lot of, a lot, of, especially in the early days, people had trouble using them. And a lot of the problem came back to this inability to breathe through their nose. So, so many of my patients at that point in time had um, a, a daily habit of mouth breathing. And so we started, I started working. What's that? Sorry to interrupt you. How yeah, long ahead. ago was this? I'm, I'm just wondering, like, Gosh. what year was this? So this would have been like 2016. Okay. Uh, 2015, 2016, 2017, kind of in that, in okay. that time period. It wasn't period. too long ago. There's a lot of information out at that point. Massive. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of information, but I hadn't really found a lot of it. And so I started just kind of exploring and, um, in that process, I'm just kind of looking around, reading articles. Um, and I started just kind of discovering that, yeah, you know, this nose breathing thing, there's really something to it. And right about the same time, um, I'm noticing that my daughter, um, who's now five, um, that she's kind of got this snoring thing going, that she's kind of got some, some oh gosh, maybe there's some airway stuff going on, and trying to figure out what do we do with that. Um, and, you know, learning things like, oh, just, you know, close her lips together while she sleeps and trying to get her to a, a nose breathing habit. Um, and 
if I knew today what I know, if I knew then what I knew today, um, we would have scheduled for uh, a tongue tie release and um, and that sort of thing. We just didn't know that at that point, and and because of that, we're still kind of struggling our way through, you know, that resolution of like, what do we do? Um, you know, her her case yeah. isn't solved yet. Uh, she's still yeah. not there. She's made lots of improvement, but not her case isn't isn't done yet. Well, I'm I'm so happy that you're saying that because I know a lot of us in the myofunctional therapy airway dentistry world, like we're in this process of learning as we go, and so yeah. we don't have all the answers, and you mm-hmm. know we're like, I'm still working on my own treatment that's been like going on for like eight years, I feel like. Yeah. And I still don't know exactly where that's going to lead and what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, yeah, I think working through it with your daughter, that's a learning experience and a learning curve in itself. So I'm, I'm glad you're bringing that up because we all feel like, oh, I'm, I'm the, the provider. Like I have to have all the answers for my family and myself. And uh-huh. um, so what are you guys kind of, what, what will your next steps be? like? So, I, so the next thoughts? step, the next step for her um, is uh, I found, I finally found the doctor. I'm really, I'm, I'm interested in having them do, I found the right provider to do a tongue tie release for her age. Cool. Um, and uh, so it, we we were de- derailed a little bit with the COVID nineteen stuff because I had just I just kind of made that uh, kind of initial contact with her, and um, and who is and, you want to give a shout out to the doctor? Yeah, so um, we haven't started working with her yet, but um, I've I've chosen to work with Dr. Santiago uh, in uh, in Issaquah. Yay! So yeah, Yay. <laughs> went down and met with her in January, and um, yeah. so yeah, that's kind I of our next Dr. step. Dr. Santiago is awesome. We'll give her a shout out. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Santiago. Good. And then, um, orthodontic wise, uh, are you guys, uh, going to work with her too, or have you got that far? I, I don't know. We haven't got, we haven't got that far yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So we'll start cool. with a, uh, I'm assuming she'll start with a cone beam and uh, get up a treatment plan. And we talked a little bit about her, um, and some of the stuff that I've done. Um, we've worked with the myo munchie and the myo munchie made a lot of, a lot of help for her. And um, in fact, even, even now, so if we go a little while without using the Maya Munchie, um, I notice that her sleep disrupt is disrupted a lot more and, uh, and that sort of thing. So, uh, and some complications with that. So looking forward to some resolution with her. (laughs) Yeah. As a, as a dad with this airway understanding, like, have you noticed any of the um, like behavioral symptoms, um, you know, what, what have you seen from like the practitioner perspective in, in your daughter, um, yeah, abs- airway stuff, if anything? Yo, absolutely. Yeah. So when, when she has a, a night of disrupted sleep, I can totally tell the next day she's a lot less cooperative. Um, she, uh, she wants to be glued to the television. Um, mm. the next day, uh, she's, she's definitely grumpy, um, mm-hmm. and obstinate, uh, all the traits that she gets from me. Uh, those, those get just surface, um, bedwetting, uh, definitely, okay. um, you know, and kind of, you see the, the, the covers thrown back and you can tell that she's been kind of thrashing around, okay. uh, in those her sleep. Are like, so. Those are like the telltale symptoms, exactly. it's like the, the exactly. thrashing around sleep, um, bedwetting, yeah. um, yeah. you know, that the behavioral, like, like you said, a little more obstinate, a little more cranky. Yep. Uh, those yep. are the signs parents should look for, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And well, it's, it, and it's interesting to, to kind of see when she, you know, when she particularly, I mean, when she uses the Mayo Munchie for a little bit before the day before I get definitely noticed she, she sleeps better that next night. And then the next day is much, is a much better arrangement. So that's so interesting. Um, Mary from Mayo Munchie would love to hear that feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. so do you want to just touch on really quick? I mean, you, this has been like super helpful, I think, for parents. But do you want to kind of explain how you guys are doing myofunctional therapy out of your office? I, I mentioned it. Yeah, bit, I'd love to hear so, you talk about the professional side of things. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I have an arrangement with um, Kenmore Dental. Uh, so I'm employed still as a full-time dental hygienist. I still I still see patients four days a week as a dental hygienist. Um, and when we come across something that looks like it's kind of in the myofunctional realm. Uh, Dr. Conway will pull me into the office, into the operatory where that patient is and say, what do you think? Um, and so they get a, a chair side myofunctional consult right there. We just have a real brief conversation about what, what I see, 
what the implications are, why, I, why, why we think it's an issue. And then Dr. Conway will say, hey, I'm going to refer you over to Dave um, and take it away. And, <laughs> and so uh, they leave there with a referral to uh, my practice, uh, which is Kenmore Mayo. Um, cool. So I operate that as an independent uh, myofunctional therapy practice. Um, and the cool part is he lets me use the office space as well. So when the dental office is closed, um, I'll come use his dental chair and, uh, you know, his, his waiting room and that sort of thing. And then um, uh, I also operate a lot via, um, via telemedicine. So uh, yeah. Skype and uh, Zoom and, and that sort of thing. Which now is like so needed, obviously. I know, totally. <laughs> totally. Situation. But yeah, I know you were doing that before. And yeah. Uh, no, I, I love what you guys are doing. I feel like you're such a good example of an office where you've got the systems down around the dentist and the hygienist working together and then referring externally. And, and yeah. that's come through trial and error, right? I mean, you Absolutely. Guys started off yeah. trying it different ways and, yep. and um, yeah, now you're, fi you figured out a system and I think it works well for the doctor, for you and the patients, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's a good fit for everybody all the way around and Cool. Yeah. And, and the, the other cool part about it is, is even those patients who are not interested in pursuing myofunctional therapy or breathing reeducation or those sorts of things, they still get that as a piece of my um, dental hygiene practice as well. So mm -hmm. um, that teenager that comes in with those fiery red um, gum tissue, you know, I used to just clean the plaque off and tell them to brush better. Uh, which never happened, but but now I'm really seeing a lot of those symptoms of like, okay, what's going on? Why why are why is the gum tissue all inflamed? Why is it just in the front? Is it is it a breathing issue? Yeah. Um, is it a myofunctional issue and 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 that sort of thing? So uh, all of my patients, kind of through their entire lifespan, which is the cool part about the dental practice I work with, is it's a whole generation, uh, a whole you know series of generations. I have three and four generation families in the practice. And so I yeah. see the whole spectrum of life. Um, and so we're working with those newborn parents, the parents of newborns. Um, and we're talking about tongue tie and breastfeeding and the, the value of, of that and what to do if you're having difficulty um, with breastfeeding yeah. all, all the way to those uh, 98 year old patients that um, are, are still trying to figure out how to live life too. So. Yeah, no, I love that. And I think this is something that I don't talk about a ton, but I think it's so valuable for these dental practices who employ hygienists who have myofunctional training, just the patient education benefits of having that hygienist there, being able to talk to the patients about yep. their breathing and their tongue posture, even if you're not doing therapy, just mm -hmm. the education around those topics, it's yeah. super important and it's super powerful. So I think those dental practices get a ton of added value and their patients get a ton of added value just from the hygienist who has that extra knowledge. So yeah, um, great point. That's, that's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything else you want to add or should we just kind of wrap let's, it up? Let's wrap it up. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, well, thank you. I, I really think that your story, and again, the, the whole point is to share stories of the healthcare providers, the hygienists and dentists, who are dealing with these things on a personal level too. And I think if we can share those stories, now patients can understand a little bit more about this and maybe even mm -hmm. other healthcare providers who aren't in the know on the airway and myofunctional stuff, maybe yeah, now absolutely. they can start to realize how common this stuff is if we just get the information out there. So absolutely. Um, yeah, why don't you, uh, again, uh, tell us your, your name of your practice, your website, how people can get in touch with you. And yeah, the Easiest way to get in touch with me is through my website, KenmoreMayo.com. Awesome. Okay. I'll, I'll link everything. I'll find you on social media. I'll link all the stuff. Perfect. I'll link your website. <laughs> and um, yeah, I hope people do get in touch with you. And thank you so much for doing this, Dave. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sarah. Sure appreciate it. Nice talking to you again. Yeah. Nice to see you. I'll, I'll see you later. Yep. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.